Ted, uh, the Miss Seattle 2 and the Gale 5 were the top qualifiers as we hear the one-minute gun. Are they the logical favorites? Not necessarily. Uh, many times the boat is capable of running in ideal water and by itself. However, they're both uh, good boats, but uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be the top ones in this race. Now you see on the screen in the top right corner the, the actually uh, the running of the official clock with now 35 seconds to go before the start of the race as the boats start to shape up in the left turn and get uh, squared away for the run to not beat the clock but be there first across the line still within the time allotted and all six boats are running in the same general area be a little tough to pick them out Notre Dame is coming along on the inside and apparently will have the lead at the moment Notre Dame is running in the inside, coming down 10 seconds to go. I don't know if he's going to be too fast or not. Coming up hard is Gale 5, and now coming like the wind is fascination. Oh, the that's inside, uh, hard Notre Dame, and it's a five vote. Two Madison and Miss Seattle, too. On the outside, and Gale 5 on the inside. They're the three leading boats, and we'll have to see how they go into the turn and come out of it. And there they are coming at you. The, widest boat on the left is Seattle 2 next to it is Miss Madison and they're pretty much in the lead and Gale 5 is the first oh, oh the boat somebody crashed I think it was Miss Seattle 2 crashed in a tremendous wave of spray and pieces I believe it's Miss Seattle 2 a tremendous crash the race is being stopped you saw those pieces going off oh the Miss Seattle 2 and there's uh, somebody stopping in the water one of the boats the race is being stopped. We've already had a tragedy. Look at the pieces. That is one of the hydroplanes and the Coast Guard uh, copter hovering right above them. Oh, Ted evidently went into the turn too hot. No, he was still on the chute, just going, just going to start into the turn. Look to me, he was way on the outside. There goes the scuba diver into the water from the uh, Coast Guard helicopter. Oh, boy, that gives you the bad feeling. You see heads bobbing in the water, and uh, that's the scuba diver and the driver who's in trouble. There comes the rescue basket. Now the drivers have all been briefed on how to get into that basket. And we're just going to have to wait here. As you saw our long shot of the boats coming at you, the boat on the outside was Miss Seattle 2. And uh, it just seemed to disintegrate. And you saw pieces flying into the air. We'll be able to show you that later in a rerun by tape recording and as far as I can tell that's probably Dallas Sartz being uh, lifted into the Coast Guard copter. Remember last year it was diving pretty bad uh, when it got into rough water it, it always seemed to have a little bit too much deck pressure forward and kept diving. I think when he shut off to go in the turn it looked to me from here that he just plain went under. We had five of the six boats lined up abreast going into the first turn last trip when tragedy struck. I wonder what it's going to be like now. I certainly hope there isn't any more tragedy business. Uh, they, they made a beautiful start last time and it looks like four of them are going to make another beautiful start. Well, Notre Dame's coming up fast there. It'll probably be in the group very shortly. All right. They'll all be fighting now from the inside track. Here they come with 25 seconds to go. And we'll watch and see if there's any potentially uh, potential of gun jumping. Notre Dame is coming on the inside. That's the inside most boat. A little hard to identify at the moment. And, and uh, Bardall, Bardall is, uh, fascinations in the middle. Bardall's in the middle. Bardall's in good position. Real fine. Bardall, Gale, and Notre Dame coming down on the line with three seconds to go. Oh boy! Outside and fascination trails on the extreme outside, and Madison is lost in the spray. Coming down to the inside, Notre Dame is the first boat, but it's behind. Bardall and uh, Gale Five are the two lead boats, and I think it's going to be uh, Gale Five. And Bardall goes into the turn and crosses over first. That's the brand new Ted Jones built boat, and Ron Musson is the pilot, and you see her there in the right turn, the south oh, turn. Oh, my gosh, it was. <laughs> and Gale 5 Gale now comes out as we outside. get a better camera angle. Gale 5 goes a little wider and comes through out, out of the turn, out in front. So it's Gale 5 and Bardall. And the third boat, uh, uh, Notre Dame now finally Notre has Dame. come out of the turn in third spot. And Bardall, with a slowdown, comes out in third. It's, let's get it straight now as we go Bardall up the back stretch. Third. It's Gale 5 with a rebel flag flying off the tail fin. Bill Cantrell in the number one spot. 
Bardall has come up uh, into second spot and Notre Dame in third. And then it's Fascination and Madison Trails. Into the left turn, Gale 5 is still the leader. And there's the Gale, bouncing quite a bit. Oh, he got a pretty tough skid there, but he's hanging in there, Bill Cantrell. Notre Bardol, Dame went in too hot in that Notre turn. Dame went in pretty hot, Ted Jones said, and he had to slow way down and get control of the boat again. Hugging the buoy, Bill Cantrell did a nice turn. Bardall's coming around pretty good shape, but Gale will come down to lead at the completion of lap one. This is Gale five, Bill Cantrell. He's across the line, and Bardall trying to get up speed. There comes the high rooster tail as Ronnie Mustn is standing on it now. And Ronnie is about nine seconds behind. In third spot, Notre Dame, and Notre Dame is being pressed by Fascination. Fascination on the inside there. And there's the Gale coming into the turn, making the entry into the corner on the right end of the course. The south turn. Pretty rocky going at times for Bill, but he's in the lead position and should have the best water to run in. He's better than halfway through the turn, starts to come up to the exit buoy to square away and make the straightaway backstretch run. Bardall is still running in the number two spot, and Notre Dame three, Fascination fourth, and pressing Notre Dame some. And uh, then we have trailing behind the Madison. There's the shot of the lead boat. Halfway up the back stretch and running very nicely, Gale five. Now here's the uh, closest race at the moment. That's for third and fourth places. And that's uh, Fascination, Fascination and, Notre and Notre Dame. And Fascination on the inside has a chance Taking to pass it. Notre Dame. Looks like Gillum is going to do it. He did it. He did it, is right. So there's your good race at the moment. And now the Notre Dame is hidden in the spray as Fascination moves into third place. Back at the head end of the race. This is Gale at the apex of the turn and coming past the turn. And Bill Cantrell is staying closer to the buoys than he sometimes does, doing a good job on the corners. Doing a beautiful job. He's got everything his own way, though. No wakes to worry about. Well, this is pretty much according to the script. The Gale leading. He was the second top qualifier. And he has eased off a little bit. Speed first time around was 109 miles an hour. This time it's 105 miles an hour unofficially. There's the Bardall in second place across the line. And it's still quite a race for third and fourth between Fascination on the inside, the right of your screen, and on the left of the screen, the outside of the course, Notre Dame. And Fascination is across first. Probably only a second or so between those two boats. There's a long shot of the gale through the south or right turn and starting up the backside again. Bill Cantrell was leading by 13 seconds over the second place Bardall last time around. So Bill is in great shape and his boat is running beautifully. Ted, little bouncing on the turns, but they all have to expect that. That's for sure. That's today is the bouncy day on the turn, especially on this north one. A long, long way back to the number two boat. And there's the Bardall. Ron Musson running a steady race has lost ground to the gale, but he's put more ground between himself and the third place boat, which is now Fascination. Well, Ronnie remembers he's got 30 miles to run, and he's going to make, uh, he won't make his bid for quite a while. That's true. He's going to hang back there and hold position. There's the third and fourth place race again with Fascination. Well out in the lead. Fascination running ahead of Notre Dame. Here we go to the north turn camera, and there's the Gale 5 coming through nicely once again, skidding into straightaway position. And there's the U-55, another shot of the Gale 5, coming down 1,000 feet from home to the completion of lap 3. He's across now. This is a 10-lap race, the rerun of Heat 1A of the Gold Cup. Notre Dame's coming up fast on Bill, on Bob Gilliam there. Right now you're looking at the second-place boat, Miss Bardall, finishing her third lap. And Mustard is 16 seconds behind the leader. And here's the third... Wait a minute, this is our turn camera. This is the first two boats that were coming at you with that long 100-inch lens, Gale going through the right turn or south turn. Fascination is still running third, by the way, with Notre Dame a close fourth. Now we widen out and get the shot of Gale 5. Just about to make the backstretch straightaway run on lap four. Bill Cantrell in the driver's seat, literally and figuratively. Back we go through the current field. 
That's the Bardall. Bardall's just about to exit from the turn and start the straightaway run. Bardall was 16 seconds behind at the end of lap three. Gale's speeds have been 109, 105, 104 for three laps. Unofficial. Third place, that's the fascination, the dark turquoise boat with Bob Gillum. And he has put a little distance between himself and Colonel Warner Gardner in Notre Dame. The fifth place boat, never in the race up to now, has been Miss Madison. But Miss Madison has closed up a bit on Notre Dame and may make a race of it at that. Marion Cooper, an old hand, and maybe he's patient and will wait for his chance. Here's the head boat of the race again, Gale Five. Bill Cantrell seems solidly in command, Ted Jones, doesn't he? Really in command of the situation. Yes, he is. He's got everything his own way. This is the Bardall skidding through the turn, and Ron Musson won't give up. I know that. He's got hopes. Oh, he'll hold his second position for another four or five laps. He'll check the time gap. It's 18 seconds between first and second place now. That's the fascination coming through the north turn. Fascination is still running third, and Bob Gillum is hugging the buoys. And there's a real good uh, race for fourth and fifth now as Notre Dame swings wide and Madison comes through on the inside. And I think Madison has passed uh, Colonel Gardner and going to fourth place. Look at these boats come down on the line. They're the last two boats in it. Madison on the inside has the lead, and Notre Dame now has dropped back into fifth position. That's it. And while the first two boats are strung out, there has been some jockeying among the third, fourth, and fifth. Now the lead boat once more. Gale Five, the Detroiter, Bill Cantrell, who has done various things out here. He's had accidents, run in the Rose Garden, he's had engines conk out, and everything else. And right now he's in good shape. This is the fifth lap he has led ever since the boats came out of the first turn. The Gale with that rebel flag flopping. That's always an identification point. And Notre Dame coming through the turn. Trouble. You could hear her engine sounding real sick going by here, and that's why she dropped back to fifth place. That's why she's dropped back. Well, he was running a good third for a while, and now Notre Dame is fifth. Meantime, we're still looking at the Gale Five, which is coming down to the halfway point of the race, the completion of lap five. He is across right now. Now the Bardol. The Bardol still has a long way to go to catch up. Ronnie Musson in the Green Dragon, stomping on it again, and trying valiantly to pick up ground. He's across lap five seconds. 16 seconds, so he has picked up two seconds in that last lap. This is fascination, running in third spot. And remember, this is Bob Gillum's uh, first, oh boy, got a pretty good bounce there, coming off the turn. Almost, and Madison, is running in uh, fourth position. We've shifted to the other end of the course. That's the Bardaw running in second position as our south turn camera gets a look. Now the Gale. Gale is starting up the back stretch. And still running beautifully. Notre Dame is coming across in front of us to uh, wind up the field at the halfway point for it. Colonel Warner Gardner has obviously lost power. The engine, as Ted Jones has said, is sick. That's true. He's getting a little bit slower and slower all the time. There's the gale. This is the boat that they've got to catch. And uh, Bill Cantrell would like to ease around there and sit on that 400-point total. Now we go back to look at the second-place boat, and that's Bardall. Madison and Fascination now, meanwhile, are at a, uh, a pretty good race for third and fourth, and we'll see them in a moment. That was the Bardall in second spot, and now those two boats that are racing for third and fourth. They're a long way back. And Fascination has again opened up a lead over the uh, Madison. Gale has just completed her sixth lap and leads by a fairly comfortable margin over Musson. Here's the Gale coming at you. Here's the lead boat. You can see it's writing characters. It's pretty good. Beautiful shot there. Gale going through the right turn, south end of the course. Ronnie looks like he's picking up on 
Bill. And Ronnie, he, uh, let's see. Well, he's back to 18 seconds again, so it's been 16 or 18 for the last several laps there, Ted. Now that's the fascination. Fascination is still running third, and fascination is completing lap six. Fascination is running 49 seconds behind the leader. Madison is running uh, fourth, 54 seconds behind the leader. And here's the Gale 5, which has run laps in order of 109, 105, 104, 103, 100 even, and then 102 plus. Very consistent race for Bill Cantrell, who has led ever since coming out of the first turn of the race. Notre Dame uh, is running so slowly now that she's going to be lapped and may have been lapped already. That's correct. Gale 5 has just gone by the Notre Dame in the left turn. And here's the Gale leading the race. This will be the completion of lap number seven of the 10 lap 30 mile Heat 1A rerun of the Gold Cup. Gale appears to have eased off somewhat. Bardahl now will come by and Bardahl will be lapping Notre Dame. Notre Dame is in the far right of your screen there. That's the Notre Dame, which is a lap behind the leaders. And here comes Bardahl and Bardahl will surely lap Notre Dame before too long. Bardahl is still staying on the outside of Colonel Gardner and may get down there and pass him and cut over in front of him before they get into that turn. Then the gale is uh, again, and the gale, is the gale going dead? Oh, the gale is going dead in the left turn area. Uh, there's, then there's some smoke coming out. Fascination. Fascination is dead. Well, let's see, it's fascination. Where's it? I lost the gale. That's the fascination. Bob, there's the gale. Two boats are dead. The gale and fascination, one at each turn, apparently, and three boats are still running. And Bardall, Ted, has waited him out and has gone into first place. All they have to do now is take it easy. He's got long distance on everyone. Okay, here is Bardall up the back stretch. Bar Bardahl is moving up the back stretch and now in the number one position with Gale Five dead in the water and out of the race and Bob Gillum's fascination also dead and out of the race in opposite turns. So it's Bardahl, Notre Dame, and Miss Madison still in contention in Heat 1A. And boy, the boats have been dropping out of things by, like flies today, Ted. There's a reason for that. Uh, this type of water, the propellers come out of water too many, many times. Uh-oh, they've stopped the race on, uh, flares have been run. Someone's uh, in the water. Oh, I see. Fascination's on fire. Fascination has finally caught fire after smoldering for a Bob while. probably jumped and, in like uh, Hickman Bob did. Gillum had to jump into the water, and that, of course, stops the race. And it means that I think we've gone far enough in the race to have called it an, an official completion at the last finish of a lap here. Such crust is on the inside. That's the boat that's nearest you in the center of the screen, lower part, 25 seconds to go. Swinging way wide is Miss U.S. Bill Muncy in Century 21 is right in the middle of the pack. Oh, they're all coming down in a blanket. 12 seconds to go, 10 seconds to go. Such crust on the inside. Tahoe misses next, then Century 21, then Gale and the U.S. from inside to outside. And Century 21, go hard. U.S. on the outside and Century 21 in the middle of the course. U.S. is leading, but Muncie may get the inside pole position coming to the turn. There you get the look at it. U.S. on the outside and Muncie the inside. They're the two boats that are coming down there first, and he's... Muncie's getting washed down a bit, it looks like, by U.S. as Don Wilson cuts across in front of him. And that's the U.S., you see, apparently leading. The camera angle is difficult, though. And one boat has died way down in the turn. Can't identify it, it yet. Looks like the uh, Tahoe Miss. It could be the Tahoe Miss. U.S. is still leading. The Suchcrest and Century 21 are next in line, and Suchcrest has forced Muncie wide in the C-21. Don Wilson, the redhead, and U.S. won in the red boat as out on the lead and Muncie's trying to catch up and the big such crust with Bob Schroeder is trying to stay up with him too. There's the three boat race and it's a good one at the moment in lap one of the rerunning of 1B. Did Tahoe Miss go dead completely? Yes. Apparently so. I Tahoe Miss is out of it. Tough break for Rush Slay and he's right down there in a bad position on the course too. 
The lead vote is US 1 with Century 21 closing up on him and trying to take him on the outside. There you see the Century 21. And Bill Muncy's hopping and skipping a little bit as he swings wider he's than going, he's accustomed to. Going by him on and the outside. he's going by on the outside. US 1 trying to save ground and stay in close. And it's a head and head boat race. And such crest is trailing in third spot and not too far back. Wilson did a beautiful job of coming around, but so did Muncie on the outside, and Muncie has nosed ahead in Century 21. So the C-21 finally takes the lead, coming down to end lap one. There's the U.S. one going by. And the Dutch crust. This U.S. is three seconds behind, Such crust is six seconds behind the leader. And we go way back to fourth place, and the Gale 7, and Tahoe Miss is out of it and in a bad position, drifting on the course near the buoy. You're looking at uh, Bill Muncy's craft coming right at you, the Century 21, going through the turn in number one position. Just as we're saying this, the Gale 7 has gone across the line, completing her first lap. The boat dead in the south turn is the Tahoe Miss. It went dead first time down there. It apparently got hosed down. There it is, Tahoe Miss with Rush Schley just standing there and you can see a lot of wake the boats have just gone by him coming up in the back stretch Muncie has opened up a lead over Wilson it's the C-21 leading with Miss U.S. trying to catch up but instead of catching up it's falling back and such crust uh, may have slowed way down oh let's oh, see the that's the crust has come out of the wake of the uh, Miss U.S. and has passed Miss U.S. the crust was lost to me in the spray wake the rooster tail that's the race for second and third. The crest, the bigger boat on the left of your screen leading. Miss U.S. still taking the inside position. I don't know if he's going to have to run through the slop there created by such crest or not. He will to some extent, that's for sure. A real good race for second and third in lap two. This is the rerunning of Heat 1B. First time around, they weren't able to complete it. Meantime, Muncie has come close to the buoys, is coming down. There he is to lead at the end of lap two by a comfortable margin. And Wilson now has done some nice jockeying, coming through close on the inside. He saved a lot of ground, but suddenly just gets going better, and the crest puts on the power. Well, I'm kind of amazed at that boat, Ted. Oh, it's got a lot of power, but look at the ride. That's bad. Very bad. He does a lot of bucking in his own wake and uh, whatever kind of rough water there is. But Don Wilson is having to slow down to run through the uh, slop created by all those boats. And Wilson is cutting in and out and trying to maneuver his boat into a more favorable position. He went to the outside. There's the Century 21 caught by our right turn camera as Muncie pilots her through. Rush Schley, by the way, is, keeps trying to restart Tahoe Miss. I don't know how successful he's going to be, but he's making the attempt. Gale 7 is still running fourth. She just went across in front of us, making the noise you probably hear. On the far side, Bill Muncy in Century 21 is the lead boat. And his lead has opened up considerably over the big Such Crust. And Such Crust, of course, has taken over that second spot ahead of Don Wilson, and he has opened up a considerable margin over Wilson now, as Wilson took a lot of water and had to run through some rough going for sure. So the boats start to string out as we're on lap three of the 10-lap running of Heat 1B. There's the action in the turn, south turn as Gale 7, the trailing boat of the four, goes through. Now back to the head end of the race. Century 21, the favored boat, has things all to itself. And uh, as usual, Ted, uh, Muncie likes to clip those pins closely coming around the corners. Yeah, he doesn't waste any gas going around the course. All he has to do now is just keep running. He's probably running 100 miles an hour left. That was the end of his third lap. And this is the second place boat, the Such Crust. The twin engine Allison, Fred Alter driving. Big blue and orange boat. Here are Muncie's laps. The first lap, 100.9. Second lap, 104.8. And the third lap, 104.8. Such Crust is still wallowing around and bouncing and jouncing. There's the dead boat that went dead the first turn of the race, the Tahoe Miss. And, uh, Muncie just went by him. I don't know whether Russ has given up his attempts to start the boat or not, but obviously he was okay. The boat just died as he went into the first turn. Century 21, moving up the back chute in great shape. 
And the boat, uh, Ted, look at it in the close-up. Well, we run away from it now, but it was running very beautifully. Oh, yeah. That's the idea of, uh, you get an idea of how far back the second-place boat is, the Such Crust. You know, yeah. Muncie's second and third heats are identical again. Right. You know, and then we go back to boat number three, and that's the Miss U.S., and Don Wilson has troubles with that boat. That's all there is to it. It's potentially a great hydroplane, but it's not operating that way today. Here's the Century 21 again. Bill Muncy with the X Miss Thriftway brings it through the left turn. There's the close up with our left turn camera. Another shot of it from the different angle. As he rounds the final buoy, gets on the run for home, and will be down here to end lap number four. This is a 10 lap race, remember. Ted Jones, uh, Bill Muncy has to think of getting up there and tying the Gale 5 with those 400 points. This is true. But the, the rate he's going, he won't have any trouble having a much faster time than the Gale because, uh, as uh, Lee Shaneth explained, the Gale's average time of the seven laps that she raced, Ryan, will be her, uh, her time. Right. Okay, the uh, Muncie's time on that last lap was 103.8. Again, he's quite consistent. Such Crust is just finishing its fourth lap. 27 seconds behind the leader. There's the lead boat on the far side as Bill Muncy jockeys her carefully. Doesn't want to risk his equipment or a spill. And here's the boat that's coming along in third spot, Miss U.S. Well behind and at this point seemingly out of contention. You never know. If the lead boat's conk out. Don may suddenly leap into contention. The Century 21, halfway up the backside now, a little better than halfway, as Bill starts to set up his turn. The boat is performing right up to what everybody thought it would today. Tahoe Miss went dead in the very first turn of the race, which made it an unfortunate thing because that's a going concern at its best, Tahoe Miss with Rush Schley driving. Gale 7 is just completing lap 7, making the noise in front of us, and there the gale is with Bob Schroeder. Now we go to Miss Century 21. As he rounds the final buoy, heads for the straightaway home shoot. Now, as uh, Tahoe Miss got her going again, apparently, or trying to, there's the shot of the Tahoe Miss. Look at that, Ted. He's at least uh, got some power there, enough to get himself out of trouble, if nothing else. Yes, the main thing, get off the race course, if nothing else. He certainly hasn't got a chance to come in on this one. But uh, Russ stayed with it and got the again, engine going again. Now, here's the Such Crust, which is still running in the number two spot, way behind the leader, but the crest is coming down for the completion of lap five. We've now had the uh, first and second place boats go halfway through the race. The crest is trailing Century 21 by 35 seconds. Moving over to the opposite side, Century 21, has about a third of a lap lead over the second place boat. There's the Century 21, and he will come up shortly and possibly lap Gail Squeppin. Starting from first to last, here's the way they stack up. Oh, wait a minute. Our, uh, Tahoe Miss is actually running and back on the course again, the back stretch. But not excessively so. He had a real bad spot down there. It's real rough down there, Rod. Right? This, sure looks like it. This crust has finally gotten it where a, a cruiser would have a little trouble getting through it. Well, I imagine Muncie will have some comments when he gets back in about it, but yes, he'd be happy with, well. the, happy with the 400 <laughs> points if he gets around another lap. Don't take anything for granted in this race, though. Here's a look at the boat that has been fourth all the way, the Gale 7. And if he keeps it running, he can come in and get those fourth place points. 169. Tahoe Miss. Went dead in the first lap. Bob, here's the south or right turn as the gale heads right for you. And that's a big boat. Doesn't bounce too much, perhaps from sheer weight. Well, even.
Even it bounces, Ted. Look at that gale bounce around. Oh, it sure it. does. I don't understand how the shaft propellers stay in those two boats because they're out of the water most of the time. The whole length is straight away. Hope all the boys are wearing those uh, supporting corsets and back braces and whatnot. They need them. They need them for the bouncing they're taking today. Here's the Miss U.S. coming down for the completion of lap nine. John Wilson running in third position. Lead boat, Century 21, a thousand feet from the finish of this heat. It's across now. Two of your boats are running here, and they're the two with the most points, the Century 21 and the Bardal. Yes, I'm sorry to see them both in the same heat, and uh, this heat with five boats and the next heat with three. I think they should have redrawn. Of course, that isn't any of my business either, but I, I'm to have made a good race out of this, they should have. <laughs> Ted, we brought you here to comment, and we're glad to get your comments, whatever they may be. <laughs> Half minute to go, and the four boats are not very far apart, as you can see. They boat on the inside is the Such Crust. Next in line is uh, Century 21, then Bardall, and way on the outside is the Miss Madison. Well, uh, let's see, there's one other boat in there. The Gale, Gale 7 is in there, too. Coming on the inside, with 10 seconds to go, is Such Crust. The next boat in line is the whiter boat. That's the Century 21. Then Bardol, then Gale, then Madison on the outside. Very close. I don't know whether Madison jumped or not. It's possible Madison jumped, but it may have been okay. And there goes the Century 21, pouring it on to try to beat everybody to the first corner. Century 21 and Bardol, and then Madison. Those are the boats you see prominently. The others are hidden in the rooster tails. Okay, we go to the important first turn. Watch the white boat cross over first. There it is, Century 21, going through the turn first, and then Bardall coming to the outside and staying as close as possible. So the two uh, hot dogs, as they like to say, are out there running and showing their heels to the rest of the craft in the race. This is Heat 2A, as we're finally around to Heat 2, late in the afternoon after many postponements and Trust. untoward incidents. Here's Ted. Trust. Bardall's making a pretty good charge up the outside. Yes, it is. But there's Bill Muncy in Century 21 still in the number one position. And such crest is tromping on it as Bob Schroeder sticks on the inside and tries to save ground, and he's pounding it pretty hard. But it's 1-2 for Century 21 and Bardall. That's the Bardall. There's the crest, the big fella on the inside. And then we go back to the uh, other Miss boats Madison. in the race. Miss Madison is currently running uh, in fourth position. I've lost the Gale 7. Yes, I wonder if he's still running. Back, right, uh, directly the across Gale from 7, us. that's right, is running in fifth spot after Miss Madison. Here's the Century 21. Coming through the turn. Better than halfway through the turn. Coming to the exit buoy. Starting oh, for the straightaway. Bill Muncy in his accustomed position at the head of the pack. And shooting for 400 points. But remember, it's a long 10 laps and 30 miles to go. This is only lap one. <laughs> And then the such crust. That's the crust across right now. Century 21 is leading Bardo by seven seconds, and Muncie turned the first lap ten and 106.9. Good time under the conditions. In this water, that was fantastic time. That north turn is extremely rough. There's Miss Century 21 heading into the turn and halfway through it now on the right end of the course. They're running in this order. Century 21, Bardall, Such Crust, Madison, Gale 7. And the Century 21 comes off the corner and straightens away for the long turn up the far side, the long straightaway run, rather than I, I use the wrong turn in term in saying turn. All right, we'll go back and look at them all. There's the Century 21 in the lead spot. Going back to the number two boat, that's still Miss Bardall with Ron Musson. It is a legal start, by the way. The start was legal. Still on the Bardall. Now we go back to the number three position. And there it is, Such Crest, the twin engine job, all aluminum, Fred Alter driving. Still running number three up the backside as Muncie is into his left turn now in the 21. There's Miss Madison with Marion Cooper running fourth. And it was 20 seconds behind the leader at the last time around the uh, line here. And way back to a pretty sick Gale 7, which is just getting into the back stretch. Here's the lead end of the race again. Century 21, 1,000 feet from home. End of lap two. Now. And the C-21 
21 has opened up a considerably longer margin over Bardal. This is the Green Dragon Bardal in second place. And Phil Swartz does need the 15 seconds behind now. Here's the Sutch Press coming up. Still running in the third position. Bouncing and bouncing. Fred Otter had to slow down for a while to get control again. And the Sutch Crust is 20 second, 27 seconds behind the leader. Miss Madison coming down in fourth position to finish lap two. And there, still little ways to go, is the Gale 7 bringing up the rear. Second lap speed was 108 miles an hour. So Bill Muncy, I think, is going out there, Ted, and make sure he gets a few laps in at top speed to set his average up in good shape. I certainly wish he'd slow down. It's not necessary anymore, both of them. There's the Gale 7, and now we go to the other end of the race, and Muncy's just about a half a lap ahead of the Gale 7. He's slowing down, setting up his turn in the left end of the course, the north end. As you can probably tell by our picture, it's a gray day. Light conditions aren't the greatest for our fine cameraman. There's uh, Jerry Berg's camera shot, our left turn. As Muncy brings the 21 around, this will be the third lap that he wraps up. He can go another 1,500 feet or so. You can see Muncy turning his head around in the cockpit every once in a while, looking around to see where they are. Still in good shape. Finishes lap three. With the Bardall coming around the turn, still running in second place. And Muncy's unofficial speed again was 108 miles an hour for lap three. He's really setting a fast pace. And Musson is running a more conservative pace. That's obvious because he's dropping back. But he's hanging in there well ahead of the third place boat, Sutch Crush. This time, the gap is 24 seconds. Century 21 ahead of Bardaw. And here's the Sutch Crust. The big one that's causing all the controversy. And Fred Alder's going to have some bumps and bruises. Sore spots from the ride he's taking. I sometimes wonder, Ted, if it isn't just the sheer weight of that boat that keeps it from taking off. This is the sure. The tremendous weight is holding it down, yet the out of balance is giving it this irregular action on the water. There's the Miss Madison coming across. Madison's still running fourth, and that's the end of her third, uh, rather, that's right, third lap. Almost a minute behind the leader. Boats are strung out all over the course. This is the fifth place runner, Gale Seven, with Bob Schroeder driving. They have not changed position since coming out of the first turn. It's been Century 21, Bardall. There's the C21. And he right now is at the top of the left turn. And it's getting pretty bumpy. I wish he'd slow down. There's no need for all that speed right at this time. You got a long race to go, Ted uh, points out. And boy, that's true. This is only his fourth lap with six yet to go after he comes across the line this trip. There's a look at the Gale 7. And now, the Century 21. That's Stan Davis with the King 100-inch lens. Ted, look at the riding qualities of the C21 there. A lot of walking and bouncing. Yes, uh, but very safely. Uh, this, is, this is normal in that turn down there with that uh, big camera right down low in the water. They all do this. Watch the noise is for, would be Century 21, the boat you see there, with 800 points after two heats. Bardall would have 700 after two heats, and Such Crust would have 600. Madison would have 525. The noise in front of us is Gale 7, completing lap four, and Century 21 on his heels is coming down to finish the halfway mark. <laughs> in the national championship boat of two years running, the Century 21, out for more points and glory. There's the Bardall. He's past the head of the turn at the left side and coming down for his straightaway run for home to complete the fifth lap. Now, here's a lapping just about to go on as the Century 21 on the outside laps Gale 7. And Gale 7, of course, drives Bill a lot farther to the outside that he's used to going around the pins, but there's no way to do it, and he's doing legally and safely. Bardall, running second, is now 32 seconds behind. 
After the first go round, he was seven seconds behind. Now let's look at the five laps. It's been 106 plus, 108, 108, 102, and now Muncie has finally slowed down to 100.9, just under 101 miles an hour. Very fine average for the first five laps. It is uh, very good. I notice the wind is coming up a little bit now. Together with this wind and this rough water from the boats, it should be a rougher race from here on out. I'm glad, very, very glad to see them slow down. Now we have a slowdown on the far side. One of the boats is apparently going That's, dead, uh, the Gale 7. It's Gale either going 7. dead or slowing way down. Slowed down, but he's apparently got more power on, and a Gale may come out of it at that. This is the Bardall you're looking at, and watch the Bardall. The Bardall may come up. It's running in second place and may lap Gale 7, which is going very, very slow and running sickly at the time. Now, that was the second place boat. We go back to third place, and boy, it's a long way back there, isn't it? There's the Such Crest running third, as it has the whole race, and not going too well. The Century 21 just coming across the line to finish lap six. Way out into the lead. And while we were going back through the field, Bardall did lap Gale 7. And Bardall is still running second, but falling farther behind Muncie in Century 21 all the way. It would appear at this time that Ron Musson's chances, Ted, uh, rest on Bill Muncie's possibly not being able to keep his equipment going for the full 30 miles. Well, Ron's strategy was to take it easy with his equipment in the event that Bill went out and hot-dogging it and blew it and would blow his engine. But Bill's smart, and uh, it's going to take more than that to make him blow an engine. It may be a little later on, after this boat has a few more races behind it, that... Uh, the Bardog would be able to challenge slap was 100 miles an hour even. And there's the Century 21 just coming past the apex of the left turn, bringing her around, squaring away. Oh, boy, a lot of bouncing through the wakes that time for Bill, but he's still in control. And he's got a chance to lap Miss Madison, which is just crossing the line. And Madison's still running in fourth spot, and Marion Cooper has slowed way down. There's the Century 21, end of lap seven, as front first all the way. And this is the uh, Madison, I presume, we're looking at, which is uh, going slowly and not having any riding troubles at that speed. Muncie may come up and lap the Madison shortly. And there he does. The Madison's now hidden in the C-21 spray, as you see him through the trees. And there Muncie goes to the outside. Madison still going slowly, and the lapping is accomplished. The noise you hear in front of us is the Bardall coming across the line, and there she is. Johnny Musson completes lap seven, now 41 seconds in time. Uh, Bardall is running at speeds of just under 100, anywhere from 96 to 98 miles an hour consistently. And there's a look at the Bardall once again as she comes down the straightaway in front of the barge. And Bardall starts his turn. There's the head end of the race. Smith Century 21 on the back stretch, slowing down. And we're going to have a look at a still picture of the start to show that the start was legal. And there it is. As a uh, cameraman up here shot the start, and there the bomb going off, and you see Miss Madison, which came close to jumping, is not ahead of the buoy. So I think that settles that right now, and we're graphically able to show you that the start was completely legal, although close for the Madison. Now back to the race in progress, and we're on lap eight for Bill Muncie, and some of the boats are way behind. Gale 7 hasn't completed lap 6 yet. There's Bill Muncie, Century 21, at the end of lap 8. Speed that time around. Well, it's a bit slower. He got down below 100 miles an hour. The last two laps have been 98.1 and 99.1. And here's the Century 21 coming right at you, having no trouble. Starts into his turn, and there's bound to be some splashing and bouncing down there. Bill Muncie running in as good water as you can find on the course at this time. Boats are all over the course. This is heat 2A. And here's the Bardall, which has run a consistent second all the way. That speeds up from 96 to 98 miles an hour under the guidance of Ron Muscle. What do you think of those speeds, Ted, for that boat? 
Oh, uh, for the Bardall? Yes. Well, he's definitely holding it back, taking it easy. I see he's gone up a little bit from 96 to 103. Uh, he is uh, holding it back, saving his engine. He knows that it's a long pull to get ahead of Century 21, and there's no need of it. Uh, so he's going to stay right. He's content to stay in second spot. Meantime, our picture shows the Gale 7, which is trailing far behind the others and may have a little problem completing the full 30 miles. Gale 7 coming down to finish lap 6 as Bill Muncy, the lead boat of the race in Century 21, has gone well into the ninth lap and has about a quarter lap to go. Such crust is now lapping Gale 7. And here's the Century 21. Now we should cut back to a shot of the other lapping there. Such crust going by on the inside past Gale 7. Well, those and two here comes boats. Century 21, and now Century 21 is going to have to run in the wake of both big ones, Ted. That's right. I was just going to say the same thing. Still running number one after nine laps. And Bill had his pace down to 93 miles an hour. I guess, Ted, after those hot early laps, he figures his average is still safe enough, so he slowed way down to take no chances. Oh, yes. Again, projecting the points. There hasn't been a change since the start, and uh, we still have, if Century 21 holds on and goes this final lap, she'll have 800 points total. And there's the Century 21, again uh, lapping another boat down there. Century 21 will have 800, Bardall would have 700, and uh, Such Crust would have 525. There's the Bardall across the line, still running second and 50 seconds behind the lead boat, Century 21. And Musson's speed slowed down again to 95 plus on that lap. So the two lead boats are in their final go round here. You're looking at a shot of the Century 21 as he is just about halfway up the back chute. Well, there's no doubt about it. That is a fine piece of racing machinery with a man who knows it, with a crew who knows how to operate it and keep it in shape. And uh, when he can win the short races and the endurance races, Ted, do so well, that's really something. Meantime, uh, Such Crust is still running third and still on the course. And Muncie almost had a chance to lap her, but not quite. This is Such Crust about to complete lap nine. He gets the green flag, which indicates to Fred Alder that he has one more lap to run. And now, Bill Muncy, hugging the buoys, is on the straightaway, coming down for the checkered flag, which is up, and he should get the gun, and you may hear it. And, oh boy, says Bill, that's uh, another big 400 points. Ted, he hasn't lost a heat this year. Oh, no, that's one. So the Century 21 is in for the big 400. Meantime, you're looking at Miss Madison, which is far back in the pack and hasn't completed a lap nine as yet. And it's just coming around and may be lapped by Bardall. Bardall will come down for a second place finish in a couple of more thousand feet. And a nice consistent race by Ronnie Musson, who quite possibly was holding back with his new boat with an uncertain engine situation. You see the points projected up on the board and that's the way they'll be. There's Bardall across with a second place finish. We still have Such Crest, Miss Madison, and Gale Seven to do some running before they cross the line for the final time. It's an easy way to pick up points for these boats. One of them will get 400 uh, if it's declared a contest, and the other one will get 300. This is true. We're another first. <laughs> Two boats in the Gold Cup heat. First for a long time. 25 seconds to the gun, and they're just in the early part of the turn at the north end, left end of the course. Remember that heat three of the Gold Cup cannot be run before an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, here they come. Five seconds to go. And it's US-1 on the inside, Notre Dame on the outside. And there's the gun. They're a thousand feet behind it. US-1 lead. US-1, the darker boat, which is actually red, and the Notre Dame, the lighter boat, mostly white. Ted, there's one thing about that US-1, it makes a lot of noise. Yes, it does, with all that horsepower. When that 
brain cuts in and gives it all the fuel it needs. It really makes a lot of noise because it's putting out a lot of horsepower out of those stacks. Well, Don in uh, US-1 kept the inside around the turn, forcing Colonel Gardner wide. I think this Notre Dame boat is potentially a good one, Ted, and we'll see what he can do right now because the U.S. has been running far below its potential. This is true. If he just pushes Donnie long enough, you know, Donnie will blow that engine, and then uh, all he has to do is coast around. Mm -hmm. We might find and this the, could occur. We might find what happened with Bob Larson in the last heat of the Space Needle race. Well, well, they're tooling up close. the back stretch, That's and close. he's still having up, still having that cutting out problem, Ted, yes, in the U.S. one. Notre Dame's almost hidden in the spray, and I think Colonel Gardner's just biding his time, waiting, staying on the heels of Don. We'll see what develops. They're in lap one of a 10-lap race. Watch Don, he pours him way out. He always does this. He's been doing it ever since I've watched him race. If uh, the Colonel comes up alongside him, he'll force him way out. Okay, there's Don still on the uh, inside. Oh, uh, the Colonel dropped back, so and he didn't have to do it. Colonel Gardner has lost power. I don't and know if he's through. going dead or not, but he, he has certainly lost power and is swinging wide. Uh, he twisted a spline drive. Okay, uh, John Wilson looks around. He finds that the Notre Dame is far back. The Notre Dame sw swung way wide. Lost speed, is trying to get it back again. And we'll take a look at him closely when he comes by. He's coming by quite close to the barge to complete lap one. And That's not sounding good, and as you can see, he's looking around. That's the exact speed you make when you twist and you fly and drive in an Allison engine. Okay, I mean, Ted, uh, I, I don't know what a spline drive is. It's like a quill shaft, only in an Allison it's called a spline drive. I see. It's still it's a connecting link between the supercharger right. and the engine? It's just a little short spline drive as opposed to a long quill shaft and it rolls. Okay, now we know. And you're looking at the head-on shot of the Notre Dame with the colonel st practically standing up in the cockpit, looking around and trying to figure, doggone it, what can I do about that, that engine? Meantime, Don Wilson in Miss US-1 is in better shape than ever going up the backstretch, and there he is. And he keeps looking around and sees that he has opened up a half a lap lead and that Colonel Gardner has trouble in the Notre Dame. Well, the luck of the draw, Ted, certainly has a lot to do with the way these hydroplane races come out. He'll have, uh, Donnie will have 400 points handed to him. Bill had to work hard for it. <laughs> the oh, boy. Eight. As Bill said, he... He wanted to run those laps as fast as he did because he's afraid of mustn't. Yes. And now, here's US-1, which has nothing to fear except not being able to complete the 30 miles. Well, when he can choose the speed, I'm sure that he will complete the 30 miles. The Miss US-1, the boat that, back in April, down at Gunnersville, Alabama, ran 200.414 miles an hour over a measured mile straightaway course. Speaking of uh, measured mile straightaway records, Ted, uh, Bill Muncy had originally scheduled an attempt to beat that over at Lake Chelan in the Century 21, but then he decided when he got over there that the altitude uh, wouldn't allow him to run properly at that time, and he may still come back and take a shot at it. I, I think the, that Bill is not satisfied uh, if he doesn't hold the records. No, I'm sure the boat will exceed 200 miles an hour. In fact, it did a couple of years ago, so I don't think he has any doubt that he'll make it when they finally set up a course that's uh, propitious to do it. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it right right out there behind the island where it should be, uh -huh. and I wish they, uh, they would use that spot again. Well, perhaps when the racing season is over this year, we'll get some kind of announcement, but we don't want to put any words in Willard Road's mouth or Bill Muncy, but I know Bill would like to get that straightaway speed record back for propeller-driven craft. I'm pretty sure that uh, Ronnie Musson will want to go after it, too, in the bar at all. We've been ignoring the boats with this recent conversation because of the fact that there's not too much of a contest going on on the lake. This is the Notre Dame, which is running second, and Phil Schwartz, correct me if I'm wrong, finishing lap two. That's correct. And the time in seconds behind, he's a minute and 14 behind this US-1, and I'm sure that Don will be able to come around and lap the colonel once or maybe twice. 
Uh, Don ran the first lap in 103.8 miles an hour, and then the second lap unofficially in 93, almost 94 miles an hour. So he's he's going along at a pretty good pace. You know, Ted, uh, in the 90s, not too many years ago, used to win the Gold Cup. Oh, that was very rapid, uh, seven, eight years ago even. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a very respectable speed. But of course, this uh, boat is, is good on the turns as well when it's running at peak performance. Not only can the U.S. go fast on the straightaways, but you expect a boat like the U.S. in qualifying to do about, oh, 116, 117 miles an hour when it's doing its best. That time he slowed way down to 88.5 miles an hour as he completed lap three. I'm afraid we have to face facts and say that this is a ho-hum contest out there on the lake and the only element of doubt is uh, one that is ever present at that and that is will these temperamental engines and hulls stay together for the full uh, 30 miles however looking ahead Ted we still may have something going for us in heat three the question is now that uh, Muncie in Century 21 has built up that lead with 800 points uh, it might be that Mussen and Bardal has the only chance to catch him. Let's l assume that, uh, that Mussen does take first in the last heat, and that will uh, put them even point-wise, so then it'll be up to the time on it that right. they made. And, and so uh, far, of course, the Century 21 is way ahead of time because Bill has run both his heats at an average of better than 101 miles an hour. That's true, but if Mussen is uh, <laughs> capable, of beating him, I'm sure that that last heat will be a real fast one. Surely, and there's always the possibility that, uh, again, that the boat may not last the full distance. This is true. Now back to what's going on on the course. This is the Notre Dame coming down the straightaway in front of us, completing lap three. And there's the US-1, which is just coming out of the turn at the head of the home straightaway, and shooting down the chute. Red-headed Donnie Wilson, easing along. Feeling uh, reasonably sure that he's got a good chance at 400 points. Had a word about this uh, little fella, Colonel Warner Gardner. I know Bill Muncy said and some of the other drivers said that they were pretty impressed with the way he handles a boat and his attitude toward the whole thing from uh, getting to meet him and run with him over there at Coeur d'Alene. I'm uh, certainly the same mind. I watched him run, and I was uh, certainly surprised that he would be doing so good. A new driver, so I went over to talk to him, and I find that he's a, uh, been a real hot limited driver for many years. So he had a good license to drive when he came into that race, and he did a fantastic job considering that his top speed was not very much over 100, and yet he averaged 97 miles an hour over there. Another fellow that you know intimately and as a true expert is the fellow who handles the boat we're looking at now, the Miss US-1, and that's, uh, I, don't, I don't mean Don Wilson, who's an expert, of course, but Roy Doobie. I understand, Ted, that you consider him about the finest engine man uh, around the pits these days. He certainly is. Uh, he, he should be allowed to uh, give vent to all the ideas he has. He should have the financial backing to come up with a, an engine, because I'm certain it would be a a real horsepower machine if he was allowed to do this. Up to this point, he's been working on a shoestring and has come up with some fantastic horsepower. Otherwise, the US would have never made this 200 miles an hour without 3,000 horsepower because she's a heavy hull. She's 8,400 pounds. It's about 1,400 pounds heavier than the Century 21 or the New Bardo. In your picture now, the US is coming around the turn wide and just about to lap Notre Dame for the first time. US is on lap five, and Notre Dame is about to complete lap four. So they're both across the line, and now Don Wilson streaks to the lead, and Colonel Gardner will have to run with his uh, wake and slop for a while. There's the head-on shot of your lead boat, the US-1. Roy Doobie, the man about whom we were talking a while ago, of course, was doing the driving when the U.S. 1 set the world straightaway speed record. Wonder why that was, Ted. Why did Doobie drive it then and uh, Don drive it in the race? Well, he was actually the only man that could keep this uh, 
tremendous power plant of his running. Incidentally, Roy Duby is an old-time automobile driver as well as a boat driver. He was in a very, very bad accident years ago driving such cross three, and he laid in the hospital for many weeks before li between life and death. And uh, actually, he still should be driving because he's very, very capable and a heady driver. And uh, I understand when he came through that, to show you the intestinal fortitude of the man, when he came through that 200 mile an hour run, that boat was going sideways, but he didn't mind. <laughs> okay, pat on the back to Roy. And there's his piece of equipment that he pampers and tends. Donnie Wilson's handling it right now. Don's sitting in a real good position because if he picks up the 400 points which he should by finishing he's already passed five laps why that will give him 625 points and at this stage of things you can't entirely count the US one out you see there are no bonus points this year but well let's say that Century 21 and Bardall are not able to finish the final heat US one would still be in a position and Notre Dame actually by fi finishing out the heat would still have 525 points and would be tied with such crust for fourth position going into the final six. Only one vote is going to be eliminated uh, for the final go round. There's the U.S. one. Don is just going around at nice even speeds. This time 91 plus miles an hour and Notre Dame goes by. That was the completion of lap five for Notre Dame and lap six for US one. There's the US again. And Ted, there's the way she rides as uh, starts into the turn. Well, the water is much nicer now and the crusts aren't, the crust isn't out there to foul up the water. It should be riding very nice. No, Notre Dame rides very well. Very, very well. Ted, that construction, I think they call those drop sponsons, right? Yes. And I don't use them. They create an unknown factor in the lift department so I don't don't use them when well, I build a boat. That's your preference uh, to not and less Stodickers to use them, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Here are the two uh, premier boat builders and designers in the unlimited business at the time. Okay, there goes the US-1 up the back stretch. Incidentally, Ted, uh, I think Les is out here, isn't he, for the Gold Cup? Yes, he is. And he's most interested in his new boats. Uh, one of them the Notre Dame and the other one the dollar bill which ran into unfortunate problems today and had to drop out of the Space Needle race when it was one of the prime favorites in that one. All right. This uh, I was wrong when I said the Notre Dame uh, twisted a, uh, a spline drive because this is too much speed for a spline drive. I'll make a new guess that he uh, burned uh, holes in the cylinders oh. in a couple of cylinders and uh, Probably numbers. running on nine or ten cylinders at this Firing time. Firing on fewer than the total number. Well, they're not getting power out of them. Uh, and in that event, he uh, couldn't possibly come out for the third heat. That's the end of lap seven for Miss US-1. You see, Ted brings out the point that if the engine is that bad, uh, he's out of it because there can be no engine change in the Gold Cup under this year's rules. Uh, Ted Jones, there was a time when you could make a complete engine change, isn't that correct, and have it be legal? Yes, yes, it just uh, changed here about a year ago, I, I believe, about a year ago. Of course, and in the old days, it was impossible to change an engine between heats, and there was no discussion on it, but in the last few years, this has been very, very possible. In fact, now they're even changing quill shafts between heats. Ramsey's crew does it in 19 minutes, and I mm. think this is some sort of a record. Uh, how many engines will a well-heeled uh, hydroplane camp have, Ted? About a dozen. Really? Starting the season, they'll have a dozen engines. They'll have possibly four or five of them assembled and ready to go, but they'll have a backlog behind them of seven yep. engines and possibly uh, two extra gear boxes and ten propellers. That's the US-1 driving up the back stretch. And this is lap eight for Don Wilson. Colonel Gardner in Notre Dame has completed six laps, and as Ted mentioned, he got, has a little more power now than he had when he had slowed way down after being in close contention for the first lap with US-1. There's another angle on the US coming through the north or left turn. Don has been over 90 for all but one lap. His slowest lap was lap three at 88 and a half. 
since then. Lap four was 92, lap five, 93, lap six, 91, and lap seven, 94. He's being rather consistent about it. Well, that's the end of lap eight for Don Wilson in this US-1. A peak 2B of the Gold Cup. And Notre Dame now coming around the buoys at the left end of the course. And this will be her seventh lap to complete. It's been called to our attention that there are some ominous looking clouds coming in over the scene, but well, we just don't know. Notre Dame completing lap seven, and that's the head-on shot of Notre Dame again. Our 100-inch uh, camera lens in the hands of Stan Davis. You know, most of our camera operators out here have uh, been on the Channel 5 crew, our originating station in Seattle, for many, many years. The Notre Dame is a boat that makes quite a pretty appearance on the course. Clean looking job. Very white with bright blue trim and that Kelly green shamrock on the tail fin. Back in 1937, the earlier boat named Notre Dame was the Gold Cup winner. And we're just checking back to uh, see what the speed was back in those days when Notre Dame was prominent. 68.6 .6 miles an hour. Well, as slow as the Notre Dame is going now, Ted, that's a lot faster than uh, the original one. Yes, sir. That uh, particular boat you're speaking of was designed by Danny Arena built by Danny Arena, and he took a, uh, an amp outboard hydroplane and doubled the dimensions. And had a beautiful Okay, Ted. Well, Don Wilson got the green flag, signifying that he has one more lap to complete to make the 10. Our camera picks up to Notre Dame as Colonel Gardner brings her down the chute to complete lap eight. A lap and a quarter, at least, behind uh, the US-1, the leader. There's the one-minute gun. We'll now start to show you the Official starting clock should come up shortly in the upper corner of your screen on the right side as the boats go up the back side. There's the uh, clock counting down the seconds, 45 seconds to the start of the race. What we were saying about Muncie in Century 21, he has faster average speed for the two previous heats, a couple of miles an hour to play with. If Musson in Bardal finishes first, Muncie could still finish second, and if he is not too distant a second, could still win because they would be tied in total points then and the race would be decided on the basis of average speed for the three heats. You see one, two, three, four, five boats in your picture, six as the one of them comes out of the spray and on the inside as usual he jockeys for that position is the Sutch Crust. We have time to go, eight seconds and it's going to be a legal start and Bardal is in a position to charge for the lead if possible. The outside streaks for the lead position, and Century 21 with Muncie also charges for the lead. And it's going to be interesting to see them go into and come out of this first turn. Boy, oh boy. Now the head-on shot coming at you. Remember, the Century 21 is the light-colored boat. You get a look at, oh, one of those boats is walking wildly on the Sponsons. That was Madison on the outside. Now Century 21 is the first boat going through, and it's being closely pursued in there by the Notre Dame. Notre Dame just on the outside of the Century 21. Difficult to tell the positions in the spray, but now coming out of it. Looks like Century 21 has taken the lead. Century 21 comes out in first position. So Bill Muncie has decided as long as he had a shot at it, he'd go through that turn and come out on top, which he did, and run in the better water for a while. And there are going to be some challenges, I'm sure. At least they'll, they'll try to make challenges. Notre Dame and Bardol are running head and head for second and third. And 
It's Bartol on the outside, Notre Dame on the inside. Second and third, right there. Oh, boy, they're head and head. A good race for second. And Notre Dame's Warner Gardner is keeping the inside position away from Musson. Way over his head. Bill Muncy still running in the number one spot. That's Notre Dame you see there. And uh, Bardall with Musson is hidden in his rooster tail. There's Muncy on the head end of the race in the leading boat, trying for his fourth Gold Cup championship. This is the boat that sometimes they refer to as Thriftway because it's a habit. This boat was named Miss Thriftway before they changed the name to Miss Century 21 in honor of the Seattle World's Fair. So coming down for lap one, Century 21 leads. Notre Dame is second. Bardall is third. There's the Bardall across. And in fourth position, Such Crush. Running fifth is Miss Madison. And trailing is the US-1, which is just not in shape. There's the head-on shot as Bill Muncy in Century 21 starts into his turn at the right end of the course, the south turn. He has clicked out his lead. But watch carefully in these corners. There might be trouble developing at any time. There could be. But Century 21 is still running okay. This is only the second lap of a 10-lap race. The third heat, the final heat of this year's Gold Cup. Notre Dame is still running two as they come out through the corner at the right end of the course. Going all the way through the field, here's the lead boat. Century 21 with Muncie. And it's that far back to Notre Dame with Warren and Gardner running two. Bardall is still running number three. And there's the Bardall. He's moved to the inside of the course, challenging Notre Dame perhaps, if it can. There's the big such crust with Bob Schroeder. Going back from such crust to the fifth position, there's Miss Madison, which has come to the inside of the course with uh, Marion Cooper driving. And the fifth boat in the race, well behind and lagging, is the Miss U.S. So we go back to the front end of the race again as Bill Muncy in Century 21 comes off the exit buoy, heads down the front straightaway to the end of lap two. Long way to go yet, but he's lengthened out the lead. At the end of lap one, he led Notre Dame by six seconds. Notre Dame is still running second and coming down to end the second lap. And it's going to be a lot farther than six seconds behind now. There's the third place boat, Bardall. Notre Dame is 12 seconds behind. Bardall running third is 18 seconds behind the leader. Such crust coming across the line in fourth spot. Such crust is 25 seconds off the pace. Muncy's first lap was 108 miles an hour. His second lap was 105, almost 106. There's the Miss Madison coming across the line in fifth spot. And way back is the US-1, just coming into the straightaway. So we have to go back to the head end of the race once more. On the back stretch and heading up that far chute is the Miss Century 21. Leading in the race and in a wonderful position to again go off with the Gold Cup Championship. He's the defending Gold Cup Champion the Diamond Cup champion of two weeks ago and the national high point champion among unlimited boats for the past two seasons. Miss Century 21 setting up his turn to go into the left turn or north end. Now, way back we go to the number two spot and it's still Notre Dame with Warner Gardner piloting, running number two. And he's doing more than most people thought he would do. Running number three is the Bardall with Ron Musson. And I would suggest Ted Jones, do I wait a minute, here's uh, the fourth boat, Such Crust. Want to get Ted in here in just a minute. And way back to the U.S., uh, the Madison running fifth, and the U.S. is behind the Madison. There's the Century 21. And uh, Ted Jones, uh, Ronnie Musson is having a little trouble keeping up. I, I think that boat, that new one, needs a couple of more races. Yes, uh, I believe he has a little engine trouble there because certainly the Notre Dame is not going very fast and he should be ahead of him. That's the Notre Dame just past through your screen, winding up lap three, still in second place, and now 18 seconds behind the leader. This is the Bardaw coming down. He was 18 seconds behind last trip, and now as uh, Ron Musson crosses the line in the green job, he is 33 seconds behind. The such crust is running fourth, and such crust might possibly be gaining a bit on Bardaw in the race for third place. Again on the far side of the course, that's the C21, the white and persimmon colored job. 
And Ted Jones, look at that. Still running like a dream on the back shoot. Sure is. Okay, we still have many laps to go. In the fourth lap for the leader. Others are just completing their third lap. This U.S. scores by in front of us. There's the U.S. just completing lap three, a minute and five seconds behind. And uh, more than a half a lap back of Muncie. This is Muncie, bouncing Bill, bouncing around as he goes into the turn. North or left end of the course. He's at the apex of the turn, starts to bring it around. Boat still holds nicely and flatly on the water, although, of course, it bounces, as they all do. Now, just projecting the points, if they hold their present positions, of course, Century 21 will win the championship with 1,200 points, and your second-place finisher would still be Bardo. I don't want to suggest that they will definitely hold position, but if they do, Century 21 would have 1,200. Bardo would have 925 for a second-place finish, and uh, Notre Dame would have 825 for a third place finish. This is the Notre Dame, still running in the second spot. And has a few hundred feet to go to complete lap four. Notre Dame is across now. This is Bardall skidding out of the turn and heading down the home chute. The gap between first and second places has steadily increased. It's now 26 seconds. Bardall is still running third. And Bardall has opened up a bigger margin over the fourth place boat such crush. Ted Jones, any comments? Uh, yes, I believe that uh, Ronnie Musson is driving a very smart race. He knows he can't catch Bill. And uh, he knows that uh, if he comes in third, he can still take second place. So the Notre Dame is, apparently isn't bothering him any. And if he keeps going, of course, uh, he's got second place in the bag. And the old bugaboo still lurking in the background is engine failure or an accident. You can't count it out. The lead boat, Miss Century 21, is on your screen. He's in lap five. And the loud noise in front of us is the Miss US-1, just completing lap four, still running sixth and last. This is Heat 3, the final heat of the 1962 Gold Cup on Lake Washington at Seattle, Washington. With Bill Muncy, the defending champion, coming off the corner, doing a lot of bouncing. Now, he has opened up a considerable amount of distance between him and the second place post. That's the end of lap five. So the heat could be a legal one now because they've gone halfway, at least the lead boat has. At the apex of the left turn is Colonel Gardner in Notre Dame, and now Ron Musson and Bardall may be in a position to challenge for second place. This is the Notre Dame. Good look at her with the 40-inch uh, zoom lens in the hands of Bob Burke. He comes down the straightaway. Colonel Gardner, who's a rather smallish man, getting a pretty good bouncing around, and he's across the line. He is now 36 seconds behind Century 21. Here comes Musson, and it looks like he might be tromping on it a little bit harder. The Bardall is to the halfway point of the race. He is 11 seconds behind the second place boat. Such Crust is coming along in uh, third position, a fourth position rather. Such Crust is across. And there we cut to a shot of the Miss Century 21 way on the far side of the course, midway up the back stretch. Century 21 running like the consistent dream it has been for lo these three years. Positions have not changed since lap one. Century 21 is leading, followed by Notre Dame, Fardo, Such Crust, Madison, and U.S. There's the big Such Crust wallowing through the turn. Very heavy boat driven by Fred Alder. Now two boats coming head on at you down the home straightaway and toward the right turn. Look at them walk on the Sponsons. Water still has the swells and the big boats create more. That happens to be the Miss Madison. And meantime, right in front of us, Century 21 crossed, completing lap six. That's the US-1, Don Wilson. And uh, the US, before long, may be in danger of being lapped by number one boat. Century 21. Here's a look at the Century 21 coming at you. 
Bill Muncy has run laps of 108, 105, 103, 103, 99, and finally has slowed down to 96 on the last go-round. Starts to come through the turn. Notre Dame is running second, a third of a lap behind. Century 21 on lap seven, going up the far side. This Bardall roars across in front of us. Meantime, still running in third spot. There's the Bardall, finishing lap six. Ronnie Musson in the saddle. Head into the race again. Bill Muncy in Century 21. Getting closer and closer to a fourth World Cup championship for Bill. Back through the field we go, and you can see what a long way it is back to the Notre Dame, which is halfway through the turn. There's going to be a close proximity between a couple of boats here. U.S. is catching up on Madison for fifth and sixth place, but uh, that's at a different end of the race. You're looking at the Fargo. Now the fourth place boat is the Such Crust, and that's the crust going through the right turn. We've shifted to the other end of the course, the left turn, the north side, and Bill Muncy is bringing it around the corner. Straightaway shot down in front of the barge again. Across the line, he'll be in a few seconds. There. End of lap seven for Miss Century 21. Running at about 95 miles an hour, I think, now, so he's slowed down. As a matter of fact, he's just under 94 miles an hour for that lap unofficially. As he slows down, he still manages to run well out in front. This is the Notre Dame, which has run second all the way through, which is a nice performance for rookie driver, Lieutenant Colonel Warner Gardner. And there you see the Notre Dame skidding through the turn. This is the Notre Dame, now Bardall running third. And Bardall still is in a position where it conceivably could make a challenge. Madison uh, has hit a buoy on the south end, so we have been in four. Madison hit a buoy. Under this year's rules, though, unless you destroy the buoy, it's no longer a foul. If you destroy or dislodge the buoy as a foul, you can hit it without being disqualified. They're still running one, two, three, Century 21, Notre Dame and Bardall in that order with Such Crust fourth, and Such Crust is just finishing lap seven. There's the Miss Century 21. The leading boat, presumably on its way to another Gold Cup championship. This boat and driver have won so many honors that you almost expect it, but, uh, oh, don't ever count on anything in a 90-mile Gold Cup race. The Miss Century 21 is at the head of the north turn, the left turn. In these positions, this Century 21, which you see now, will finish with 1,200 points for a per perfect three first place finishes. And if Bardall finishes as high as third, Bardall will finish second in the overall point standings for the race. There's Muncie across. End of lap eight. There's the Bardall, which is the potential second place finisher, still running in third spot. And uh, creeping up a little bit on Notre Dame, but not having the success really in catching her that Ron Musson would like to have. He doesn't need to, though, because he can still finish second ahead of the Notre Dame by finishing in this particular position, third. Here's the head-on shot of the Bardall, and then she turns around. Our left turn camera catches the close-up shot. Now Ronnie squares her away for the straightaway run down the home chute, and here he comes. So you can kind of look for this boat to finish second in the overall race. Bardall roars by, still in third position, 52 seconds behind the leader. Muncie's last lap in Century 21 was down at 91.9 miles an hour. He's now on his ninth lap, and it won't be too long before he uh, completes it. He's up the backside and just starting to decelerate to set up his turn. Such Crust comes across the line in front of us. Such Crust still running in fourth place. The twin engine all aluminum job. Now there's the south turn, right turn of the race. Coming at you, the Such Crust.
Chris Madison roars across the line, still running fifth, and Don Wilson, a rather close sixth. There's the Madison. And again, here's the potential winner. All odds are with Bill Muncy now in Century 21. A thousand feet to go for the completion of lap nine. The green flag is up. That signals he has one lap to do it. Ted, uh, I think the odds are really with him that he's going to be able to keep the boat running and uh, win another Gold Cup. If the speed, the slow speed he's going on, certainly he'll stay together. Absolutely. He'll get lazy, and uh, not lazy, but tired down there someplace, and uh, make a bad turn, and even conceivably spin out. But uh, uh, this is very. It shouldn't happen anyway. This is something that shouldn't happen. Certainly shouldn't. Well, we're still concentrating on the lead boat and the potential Gold Cup champion for 1962. The beautiful Miss Century 21. Noise in the foreground. Notre Dame still running second and a very distant second. And Miss Bardall running third with the potential of winding up second in the Gold Cup final point totals. And Miss Century 21 has started to go up the back chute. Bill Muncy has really throttled her down now and is taking no chances. Such crust goes across in front of us in fourth spot at the end of lap nine. But all eyes are on Miss Century 21, which is going to win the race unless it comes a cropper in the final few hundred yards. He's finally into the last turn. Bill hasn't lost a heat in unlimited racing this year. And he's keeping his record clear. He's at the head of the turn, starts to come around and head for home. The gun is sounding. The gun sounded way ahead of things there. I don't know what that was for. But here comes Century 21. He's coming in close to the barge. We'll get a good close-up shot. There's your winner, the champion. Checkered flag, the gun went off a second time. I think they were premature the first trip. And Miss Century 21, as uh, a lot of the rail birds predicted, had the stuff to come through when the chips were down and uh, not only win the speed contest, but win the endurance contest that a 90 mile Gold Cup race certainly is. Now this is the boat, which is still running third in this heat, the Miss Bardall, which has a chance to stay in that spot and still finish second. Century 21 has won 1,200 points and first place. Coming across the line in front of us, getting the checkered flag is Warner Gardner in Notre Dame for a second place heat finish and a third place race finish. And here's the Bardall for its final thousand feet, a third place heat finish, and a second place Gold Cup finish for a little stubby driver Ron Musson from Akron, Ohio. It's a scene of near pandemonium that we see before us here. Race officials are now attempting to get Bill over to the presentation stand. Needless to say, time is running very short. Race day has gone much longer than was originally anticipated. At least we got our race completed. I don't know if you all realize that if we hadn't finished the last heat, we would have had to have a rerun tomorrow, regardless if we'd had five laps. Now let's do it out there, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Muncy, the Gold Cup champion, and we're gold. Let's do it. Okay, Con. Ah, just a couple of prune peddlers. <laughs> Fastest grocery cart in town. Yeah. <laughs> and his good wife, uh, Bill's wife, uh, Kit Muncy here. <laughs> Well, Bill, if I can get some of this money out here. Excellent. And get the uh, gold cup. Who's got their hand out here? Well, to begin with, I'll give you a check. Bill, I might as well give it, give it to you, too. Here's a check for $11,000 for first place in the gold cup race. Thank you, Tom. Also, Willard, for you, a take-home trophy, a miniature gold cup.
You better look out. Her father's a prune peddler, too. You know, he owns a supermarket. And, Bill, here's another little gold cup for you to keep as one of your mementos. And you can't beat a clean sweep. 1,200 points. First, first, and first. You've done a wonderful job, Bill. Now, if we get only Bart out over here. Get over on the other side here, Ollie, will you? And Bill Musson. Ron Musson and his good wife, Betty, on the other side here. And while they're taking some pictures, Ollie, here is $6,000 for you for second place. Thank you very much. And also a small take-home gold cup. his wife, Kit, there to his left on your screen. Another three children. 